It was pretty solid performance. Did win. Ooh. He's gone for it. So Yankos has decided to treat us tonight with a little bit of a carry champ. Not gonna get the Sejuani. First pick tonight. Gets a banned out. Giga Chad Yankos just says, I'll pick a carry then instead. Wave. Oh, the crowd knows Here it's coming. Go. Little bit of action. Oh, Jack Spectra leveled up. That's going to sting a bit. They're trying to take away the pass from That's going to be big. Knock up down goes oh, in. The TP coming in. Jack Spectra trying to turn it back. Toss, going taking, on? burning. Goes down for first blood. A KO. We looked at how these two teams were going to match up. Bot lane was one of the big areas that we talked about there potentially being a discrepancy. But jungle. The area where they could have an edge now is Yankos comes into the top side. Nice slow coming out here. Heavy. He's going to flash. Jumping out. No. He's done. He it. already flashed. He's done. He's gone. The experience coming out of Yankos doesn't go for Drake early. Make sure he's topside on the spawn timer. Red buff warded to make sure that he's safe. And he's not running into any 3v3. This one up really easy. Markoon's just going to look for some top camps. Maybe he can find this top dive that he's been looking for these past couple of hovers. Ebi's full HP though and has ult, so yeah, he just runs away from that. Doesn't even mean that he can finally look to apply his advantage to other areas on the map. Rest of Heretics pushing in mid, maybe looking to immediately use that Herald as Jack Spectre steps up and chunks out Surtus. Yep. Herald goes down, Tower goes down, that's the trade thus far. Team Heretics maybe wanting to keep this play going, but the Colon going to come in and delete a lot of these minions. Will at least slow the push down a little bit, no plates. Harold's gonna do a good chunk of damage. If they can break mid, it's big for the yeah. team. It's a long con play and it's gonna work out. So a lot of gold goes over to the Zeri, but Heretics traded for Matt the CC and get in range, then she's just gonna take over. So Heretics actually playing for the three man mid here. Ruby and Jack Spectra have been grouping up a lot, so you'll notice that Jack Spectra's creep score is just falling down slowly to Exekick, who's just being donated all these side lane gold. So what Heretics are doing here is they're just forcing map control and allowing Exekick to get back. Going. They've lost the tier two mid. Evie's still in the area though, can just leap this into the risky. wave and delete it. Jack Spectra coming in. There's not really much of a big pretty well. Now, body block, TP coming in, getting the flash out from DOS. Ruby TP to the top side. Jack Spectre here as well. Irrelevant. Irrelevant now coming in as well. Jack Spectre just gonna dash right out to safety. Scooped back. Irrelevant, there's nowhere to go. Okay, it's just a little charitable kill donation there. Zevi wants to keep the play going. Towers on opposite sides. And then you then overload base, a side lane. And then you'd come into your side yep. lane expecting to trade opposite again. And they're all just standing there. And then you have to TP, invest here resources, and here they are again. If at first that you don't succeed, try, try again. Gonna look for the stun. Stolen Jack's ultimate. Gonna make sure that Surtis is nice and tanky. Doss tanking that one up there. Desperately trying to finish off. Irrelevant. He's gonna turn Mega, but will he get anything done? Time? No! They're finally going to kill Evie and break this tier two. The only silver lining on the back end of that play is the fact that there's the really nothing well. left on the map. Level yeah. 15 already. Rod of Age is so strong in yep. getting this side us up to 16. Oh, he flashed. Away. Big stun, looking for the solo bolo. Relevant flashing back. Heavy, just heavy, slightly heavy, into the heavy, same toes. Heavy, he finds it up, Evie! He finds it. The solo kill oh. buffed up by Nami somehow. We'll grab that one. Was he? That's what it said on the screen. Uh, okay. I don't know if we can trust the screen right now, but that's what it yeah, said on the screen. He got the assist on the bottom right. Wait. Um, okay. I don't think there's anything. I mean, maybe someone on Twitter knows, but. We'll have to find out in the meantime. Surge is looking to finish these kills off. Marku leaping into the backside. Jack Spectre going to be in trouble. Mercy going to be in trouble. It should be an easy kill onto the side. He's calling. He's running. Jack, oh can God, he get his He's ticking. Close. He's burning. Mission impossible. Oh it is God. impossible. He gets outplayed in the end. Heavy, looking for the stun on the backside. Ooh, gets over. Man. Excellent, excellent use of the buffer there. Now, getting knocked out. Marku irrelevant. Waiting on the back. Smite, is it available? No, not for Marcoon, not quite yet. Ticking down, but there's no jungler in the area as Yankos is dead. Overlay's it's coming gone. back. Baron going down. Oh. Sask going to grab this one. Team Just like that, but Yankos will take to commit. Don't really think there's a way they can save this, but I mean, they can put an Azir tower up if it's off cooldown here. Happy just matching two for two on the Drakes overall. Ocean Soul. I mean, it's Ocean Soul. Yankos waiting against that wall there. It's his wall. No one's gonna oh, take it from him. Trying to hit Exekick Wait, off to the side. What? They're just gonna delete him right as the fight starts. Mursa, goodbye. TP coming in off to the side. Evi, Is he gonna go now they're gonna keep this fight going. Big stun on two, three. Evi getting some work done as Yanko's backing off. But again, the front line, the back line rather, from the side of Team Heretics really just cannot Megan get on. onto these Megan carries. On. Megan all ready to go. Evi getting chunked out. Evi shut down. Eyes on Exekick. Exekick is everything. One. Looking for two. He gets two. Looking for three. But Sartus is gonna grab it. And SK Ooh. monstering in the fight. Ruby running for his life. But that is it's a over. huge, huge. Shut down, SK! Find the fight! They just make it look so easy! Five for zero! SK just run head first into Heretics. No wave, no nothing. Screw it, just engage. Mercer gets blown up. Jack Spectra gets blown up. Ebi tries to save the day. 
and they end up losing the game. Scaling was on their side, there was a Baron up, they had map control, but just like that, they're going to TP on the cannon to keep the reduction on the tower, I believe. It looks like it's going to live. There's Versus a wave coming in. Trying to kill over. the cannon, it's, it's good, There's it's nothing. over. Wow, okay, so all of a sudden, the blink of an eye, SK, 5 for 0, wiped them off the they map. They struggled in the bot lane, they struggled on the top side, but in the mid and late game, SK show up. It's that teddy bear mentality. They're strong. We know it now, just go in. They have perceived the death team needs more reliable engage because right now SK are basically running back the same composition. They don't have the same Silas playmaking ability, but they have much more early to mid game roaming coming in from the Talia. And if I'm heretics right now, I am sweating. It's of irrelevant. Just first item Cole, knowing that you're just going to power farm for 100 creeps and nothing else is going to happen. Exit kick, uh, back it up, getting it. caught on the edge of the bubble. Oh, that is brutal. Jack Spectre, easy kill. First blood, are they going to go for the dive onto Dom? The boom! The Achilles heel! Take your shoes off, Exit kick! Oh my god. Oh, it's the big boots. This is this is uh, why they say. This is it's the berserk grease. suffering for fashion. That's what that was. Yeah. We look overall at SK's composition, but Team Heretics this time around building a much more uh, confident early lead, at least on the bottom side of the lane or bottom side of the map. And we're just yeah. gonna have to see how they play this mid game, see if they can hold on to this lead for longer and not let themselves get caught out in a lot of these 5v5s. Is Abby. all in coming. Uh -oh. Danger. This is going to be bad for Irrelevant. Irrelevant needs to make his way away from this one. He's going to try to bounce out, but Evie holding the W. It's beautiful play thus oh, far. He's going to keep going oh, for the Evie. dive. Irrelevant going to try to finish the job. One more tower shot finishing off Evie. It will be a one for one in the end. Well played, though, by Evie. I think he held Mercer's his apart from the heel. Is it Mercer, the target? Don't face check that push. Oof. Ooh, now they're just going to try to burn down Mercer. Wave coming in. Mercer's still standing for now. Yank goes really flash. He's just going to oh, oh, stop the kill. He's ticking. Mercer's still burning on the backside, but it does not matter. They're looking for two more kills. Jack's oh, retreating to Exit Kick. Exit Kick. Doesn't even have an item completed yet. Yankos knows Rebel. that they are stronger, oh, so feeling confident to go for this one. The pushback is beautiful for Marku to interrupt that one, but still the bubble will connect, finding all the CC they need to take the jungler out. It's irrelevant on the backside. Nobody can dash out. Nobody can get out of here. Irrelevant. Everyone waiting in the Lamb's respite. Close to mega. All eyes on the Gnar, all eyes on the Mega. Evie trying to buy as much space as he can for his team. Now retreating unstoppable out, trying to pull them back in, giving his life so the rest of the team can escape as he buys a few more seconds. Nothing here left for him. Exekick will grab the kill in the end. Will they grab the hair? A little bit of damage in. And I think what Ebi's eyes are on right now is irrelevant. He sees a Meganar pumping up. He's saying to himself, well, I think if I go in here, maybe the Meganar doesn't go on my team. So he sacrificed himself in a way. That's the only angle I can see that Ebi looked at. Ends up dying. His team escapes. Not the end of the world. It's a one for one. Top yeah. tower is going to go down for Heretics despite losing that Herald. I think no matter what happens there, if you try to retreat into the choke, uh, where your team is going, you're yeah. going to die. He has no flash right. Yeah, there's no way out for him at that point. Angry, so. so you can ignore the um, disconnect message. Everything is good. Everything is Gucci. Look for two towers here. Depends on the information they have, but they're all up here. May as well keep going. Yep. Four to five, actually five out of five. Mid to bottom side for Team Heretics. They're going to grab the third Drake and themselves one step closer to Hextech Soul. Three out of four, only 17 minutes in is big, but immediate gold advantage that they have is going to be mitigated somewhat by SK, pushing in a lot of these waves. Ruby will be there to catch that top side, and Yanko's going to grab the dragon. Mm -hmm. Four stacks for the They have the damage. They're going to go for it. Heavy, no flash. Going in. Looking for the lockup. Unstoppable back to safety. Immediately going to ult just to mid-generate as much distance as possible from the rest of the team. Beautiful footwork coming in from Envy. Irrelevant again. Caught out under a tier 2 tower. Just like in game 1. This time Yanko's going to grab the kill. Oh, Envy. And the rest of the fight's still going. Doss running, but there's so much damage coming in from this Azir. SK struggling on these dives across both games, but Exekick now could be the one in trouble. Holding on to his for now, ulting immediately, trying to get the fight kicked off, trying to get it out, burning, ticking. Ignite, Ignite. will burn him down. Jack Spectra finding the kill, but the rest of SK now looking for team. Certus, SK actually want to wait, but they also need to force because of the Meganar. Oh, this is such a up now. This, this is where position Certus to be will in. throw it. Certus needs to all to split the team fight. He's going to do it, and he can catch at least Mercer off on the backside. And now they're looking to break the fight out. They managed to take the dragon away. They deny the soul for now. But Jack Spectre in the back of the pit is doing absolutely nothing. All of that gold, unable to make it. The rage. They know Makun's around here. They don't see him. Here's the wall. They're looking for his ear. It's going to be big. Ruby isolated. Damage is coming in, but he's going to get pushed back into the rest of the team. Now ulting oh, back in. Sorcerer should have the free set of his life. Irrelevant! Finding two instantly on the backside, but no one follows up. No one is there for him. He is left empty-handed. This man's going to have to buy himself bubble, bubble. flowers at the back of this team fight because no one else is going to do it. SK finally showing up. But it's a messy exchange once again. That ult should have sealed the deal, but it's now Evie on the backside. Oh, Evie looking for the flank. It is Team Heretics looking to turn, but they are out of carry. That's Jack Spectra winning. running. Marcoon coming in. Massive shutdown.
carries the entire fight. X kick didn't really get anything done, and now here we are the hero, and down goes Ruby. Stepping up here for SK, we talked about X kick's impact, but the rest of SK is showing their caliber. Can Yanko steal it? He could jump in, but he doesn't have the ultimate. Irrelevant way. He's just going to go for the wall. He's just going to stun him. He's just going to deny it. 2k getting lower. They're going to burn through the Baron as quickly as they can. And again, SK take a Baron. So many. Steal it. 4k getting lower. Yankos has no vision in the pit. He should just be there, Drake. Yeah. Relevant off to the side. Playing well. Doesn't get clipped by the bubble. I feel like Heretic should be here. Now coming in for Marcoon. They're entirely grouped. Going to get knocked back. Heavy trying to buy as much as he can. Marcoon is all alone jumping into this one, but they don't have the damage to kill the buy. Marcoon refuses to die. And now Exekick has come to play. Jack Spectre on the tree. Yankos Using this minute left of Baron will get them a tier two. But that'll be it. So. Heretic's not out of it just yet. That fight didn't lose them the game. They're holding on. They've lost their lead. But I don't think they're out of it just yet. They still have the Azir push, but now the game is in SK's favor. And Wolf's the thing, coming down. Oh, buying a bit more space. I don't think they're going to overcommit to this one. They can't see the rest of the team. Evie just going to dash to his teammates, make it out to safety. Yep. All of SK are here. Baron buffs off in five. That was the last wave to play for that bot tier two. I mean, they can try and stay a little bit longer, but they need to push them out somehow, maybe with a uh, Talia combo. Looks like Heretics are just dropping it. Yeah, no point defending that. The compositions are difficult to play without CC, but when there's a random wall that can appear at any moment, that's a massive oh, threat. Yanko's gonna get knocked back, knocked up one more time. It's an absolute bounce house for the Kindred. No chance to push that Lamb's respect. This game doesn't really have it, but last game they did. With we the Jacks. They're to just steal this one away. They're just gonna, they're just gonna brute force it, so. Okay, Ruby, no, he's just, 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 just flipping it. Uh, okay, they tried to miss Red to play. I mean, it's tough because sometimes you've got a two and a seven, and you just decide that you need to play out that hand. But I respect it. Sometimes you got to take the just risk. Got to take the all in. SK gonna grab Baron, and I think an incredibly difficult day for Team Heretics because for every play they've made in the early, the problem they have now is the enemy carries are ahead when Heretics had their carries ahead the majority of the game, and they can just play this one four, siege it down, see if Heretics can find. A big team fight. They have got the range champs, so if they overcommit, yes, they could be. Big punish, knockback. Look at that. Goodbye to Ruby. Running. Scoot oh, down. Next team. Maybe went too deep. Now, what can they finish? Exekick. Arm. Exekick dashing out to safety. He refuses to go down. And his Yankos now trying to get one more kill, but only Jack Spectra dies. How's he gone down? SK have lost one of their main carries. Ruby's had to flash away. Bot waves pushing in. I think Irrelevant's going to base and TP back here. Looking to end on this wave, perhaps, but it looks like they might back away. Health bars are relatively low, but they're gonna go towards the mid. Irrelevant's TPing in there, calling his team, saying, move towards mid, we've got a wave, let's play on that. Try to look for a next objective, next inhibitor. Keep cracking this base of Heretics open. 25 seconds on the Lucian. SK will play around that. Q channeled, Evie unstoppable again. Well played to make it out to safety. Immediately going to be forced to use the Gargoyle Shield, and now going back into Lamps. Red's been irrelevant, can just toss it back into his team if he wants to, but he's holding on for now. Searches. Oh. Ooh, very aggressive step forward. Will not find the flip back into the rest of his team. So it is just going to be the inhibitor. I think he needs to be careful here. TP behind could be deadly here for SK. Where's Heavy? Can he find a ward? There it is. This is it. This is everything for Heretics. They're so low. There's so many blinking health bars. He doesn't know where they are. Heavy trying to find the angle. There's no way they are. spotting, he's just guessing at this point, but the hex gates! Yeah, they're out. Things are flushed out of bot lane. That's the only way they can get vision. SK playing as well, just matching yeah. what they want to do. The hex gate out here from X-Kick, and then move back into the bot side jungle. It's a game of push and pull here from SK. Trying to hold this line in the jungle. Weaver's wall. You can see it right there. So just all built it. over, irrelevant on the side. Jack Spencer yeah. leaping in! Holding on for now due to the lamp dress, but Marku getting chipped away. Uh, Jack Spencer gets flicked back into the rest of the team, but he's still standing. Irrelevant off to the side, 1v1 for Sebi. Ruby just gonna get taken out, and it is domination from SK. Confidence in the execution is finally X kick is gonna get to auto attack. Do the damage he's been waiting to do all game long. Now on a killing spree, now with a double, and that is it. The whimper of heretics. A struggle of a series, but SK will come out on top. A lot to work on, a lot to clean up, but ultimately it is they who will win the day. Heretics knocked out of the winter season as SK moved to base Vitality tomorrow. Yeah, they were the better team on the day. Irrelevant was playing his own game, you know? But he yeah. was doing a really well, a good job at playing he his own game. He did die a lot. I'm giving it to Sirtis. Massive yeah. Silas game. I think all of them had stand-up performances. Sirtis yeah. on the carry, Marcoon on the slam dunk, and Irrelevant on his island, just outperforming, I think, in a way. Yeah. Um, just winning on his lane phase and being useful in fights. But big win for SK. This is a roster that they want to push into the top four. I mean, they finished so high in the regular season. Everyone was surprised. Can they keep that momentum going? Because a lot of teams flop in the best in the best of threes, best of fives, despite having good uh, regular seasons in the past. Yeah, and we are setting up an interview at the moment. And when we're ready with that, we'll send it on over to Lore. But in the meantime, just thinking more about kind of what this game shows us for tomorrow, I think that uh, a lot more potential 
yeah. for Vitality to be a more explosive team. I think Markun got a lot of work done today in game two. Game yeah. one, a bit of a struggle, not the kind of game you can afford to have against a player like Bo, even if he's not the most consistent jungler in our league. I think giving small edges over to a team like Vitality, especially against their top side, it's a risky proposition. Yeah, you got to tame the beast of Bo. I've seen Nidalee's level two gank bolt and sit there for three minutes, ignoring his camps, trying to punish you. Sometimes he tames himself, though. At times, yeah. I think that's when he dies, though. Because <laughs> he just goes in, doesn't he? The fountain tames him. Ten, ten deaths on Vi, just non-stop sending it. So yeah, I think it's about containing the beast, uh, making sure they have full information as to where Bo is. Uh, yep. But yeah, that'll be an exciting series. And they'll get to play in studio. So obviously, playing from home affects different players differently. Can't be sure True. certain how it affects uh, either of the teams that played today. But stage we know that buff. SK and Vitality will be able to play on stage again tomorrow, and that's, that's big. Stage buff or stage nerf? What, would you, what do you think you are? Are you a stage buff or a stage nerf? I'm a stage nerf, Oh yeah, most certainly. Because there's no way that I get better. I, I play horribly with zero pressure on. I don't think there's any way I get better. Just start shaking. Uh -uh. You've seen, you've played games with me. Yeah. Other than our signature Volibear Pike I bottom lane. The pressure you're under is when I'm like dead in Apex. I'm like spectating you. And like That's three, true. Two or three people are watching you and you're the last one alive. It's like... That's, the nice thing about League of Legends is people don't usually get to watch my POV until they're already dead. So it's like, oh, you're going to criticize me? Is this a seance, bro? I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't know we were speaking to ghosts. All they do, all you see is the, fl the flashy highlight reels. You yep. just clip those on out. That's the secret. You can be bad at League, but if you clip your right moments, you can be people good. will think you're good. Just make montages. Yeah, the PogChamp moments. Um, your Pike has a lot of PogChamp moments. Thank you. Yeah, I don't maybe. think it has as many PogChamp moments as, as uh, Certus's Talia in this series, though. Did I have a lot of PogChamp? Did the he die in flick. this series? I don't think he did die. We'll have to find out. Interview. Looks like we're having some technical technical difficulties as I have some speaking difficulties. So in the meantime, we're going to head to a break. We'll be back with more LEC action. Don't go anywhere. I think Medi Vetti's coming up. It's going to be a Ooh. great day. BDS Medi Medi coming time. up. Astralis. Welcome back to the LEC for our post-game interview with winner Exakik. Thank you so much for joining me. Félicitations. For taking down, Thank you. Um, yeah, for taking down Heretics today. I want to talk about this series. It was really clean 2-0 from you guys, but the, did, the second game didn't go as expected. I think in the early game because of the whole Yenko's attention to the bot lane. Can you explain how it impacted the early game and the first 15 minutes of the game for you guys? I mean, uh, especially for bot lane matchup, right? We are supposed to do three wave crash because uh, we have full power into Lucian Nami because they are very weak level one. But then. I think we were too early, so I think it's, it shows on the broadcast that Nami is sweeping the world, right? Level 1? Yeah. And then Yankos knows we have no world, so it just comes to level 2 gank and be annoying when we want to stack the wave. So I have, I'm forced to base in this matchup. Mm -hmm. And then our jungle is weak, so we can't really contest the Kindred. So I just can't play actually because of this gank, which is not supposed to be normal. But I guess uh -huh. in this game, it was a very good call from them to just uh, uh, not allow us to play on bot. It was really well played for them, but how did you recover from this? I mean, honestly, when I saw Gale for Lucian into me having like boots and three long swords, I was like, it's fucking lost. But uh, <laughs> but uh, I think from this or now, he's allowed to play 1v1, right? Because Kindred is camping bot, and then he's getting ahead, and then we are getting mm -hmm. uh, plates and CS lead, and then Mark is getting six. So how we play is just like we play through Gnar flank in teamfights. We don't play through mid too much because Lucian is too strong, and we just play front to back with the Talia because actually Talia is very good into their comp. Right? They have like uh, four champs that needs to dash. They can't really play mm -hmm. into her, so it, the game was just not around me anymore because I was too behind. It was more around my top side and just fighting well. And you came up with the right game plan to finally get the victory that time. And I wanted to follow up on the matchup on the bot lane actually because for me, this series was all about bot lane. And in Ready Check, we hyped up the matchup between you and Jack Spectra. What do you think of him as a player? Because you guys go way back from the EU Masters last year. And how do you think he developed as a player this year in the LEC? Uh, I think he's good. But honestly, I think me and those are probably slightly better than Jack Spectra and Mercer, right? But here they kind of surprised us in game two. But yeah, overall, I think we stepped up a lot compared to you, Master, where we mm -hmm. completely choked, right? That's why we got uh, Giga Stomped. And uh, I think the key is just to kind of not give him Draven, right? Because he's very comfortable on it. And they probably have a, a very clear game plan on how to play around it. And that's what we did here uh, in this series, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, it's very nice to play against him because mm -hmm. we have kind of like this uh, rivalry, right? And But I think we are better probably as a team and on the bot lane. So that showed on game one, right? But on game two, it was kind of... <laughs> I got kind of shit stomped. But 
yeah, I mean, it's kind of nice. It can't always be about you guys and bot lane, but you were mentioning how confident you feel right now in the LEC, especially being paired with DOS on the bot lane. And I know that there's a lot of discussion around the fact that you may become one of the best bot lanes in the LEC in the months to come. How do you react to this? Uh, I think that's uh, probably a cap. I think we need to still work a lot with us, especially on our confidence on, sta on stage, because probably in scrims we play very good, but sometimes we have troubles to uh, replicate it uh, in the officials. Mm -hmm. Whereas there is like bot lanes like G2 that probably don't care if it's scrims or officials, right? So they just play very good. And I think uh, Koi bot lane stepped up a lot and they came back to their uh, summer split uh, form. Mm -hmm. So... I'd say that we are not too bad, but we are not too good either. We just need to keep working and stay disciplined and hope that the game two that against Heretics never happen again, especially yeah. when the matchup is supposed to be that free. I know you take losses and um, and everything like this very personally. And talking about SK as a whole, you came into this week having to bounce back from the loss you suffered last week, knowing that if you won today, which you did, you would have to play again tomorrow against Vitality. How did you prepare for this week, knowing that you had to play potentially two back-to-back -back best of threes? Uh, I think we prepared the Heretics first and Vitality, we don't really care too much because there is the series against Heretics first. And uh, personally, I was like, wait, if I lose on Saturday, I'm out actually, and I'm in vacation. So I was like, kind of shocked actually that we can be third place in the regular season and just be eight to seventh place on, on group stage. But now winning to zero and advancing into the next step, I think it's nice. And I think Vitality didn't show up that strong, I'd say, uh, against Heretics last week. But we didn't either against Koi, right? So I think it's just going to be fun tomorrow to play against Neon. Uh, I think I hope that they they come up uh, very strong on the bot lane against us so we can have fun. And uh, yeah, I just want to win against them, right? Well, I hope you guys give us an amazing series. Thank you so much for the interview, Exakik. A demain Thank against you. Vitality. And to set up for our next match, Astralis find themselves on a miracle run. And a few weeks ago, on the Baron Pit, Ender agreed to Finn's request to have him on between two Ivorns in exchange of making the miracle run. And to make good on our end of the bargain, Ender, over to you. Hey. Hi. hi. Uh, great being here. Cool. Um, we are back for Between Two Ivorns. I am Ender here with uh, Finn. Um, I wanted to know, uh, wh where's this name, uh, this name Finn come from? Yeah, it's... Like, it's Adventure it's, Time? No, it's, it's quite silly. It's just like my real name. Right. Yeah. Like Huckleberry. No, no, no. It's actually, uh, my mother gave it to me. Um, She's like thought of it. She thought it was a cool name. She's a Star Wars fan. Uh, no, I don't. I, not that I know. Can you can you give me just like a, a Ray, Ray? I wouldn't want to do that. No, sorry. Uh, okay. Um. You know, come to think of it, what is? Do you mind? I'm trying to conduct a professional interview back here. Get, get back to work. Uh, so actually, I, want, I wanted to talk to you about, obviously there's some big games coming up uh, this weekend. Um, maybe at some point, are, are you okay? No, Is he uh, bothering you? I'm, I'm just curious what, what he's doing here. That's, that's all. Uh, budget cuts. Budget cuts? Yeah. I see. Okay. Astralis would know something about that, right? Yeah. I mean, you, you 